Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, Jimmy Cotty here with the Georgia Ready Mix Concrete Association. And uh, it's a pleasure this morning to be joined by uh, a friend of ours, Mr. John Hunt with Market Insight. Uh, for those of you who've seen John before, you might recall him from our annual meetings. He's been uh, joined us a few times in the past and just brings good information with regards to the housing market. And uh, so this morning, we're just going to have a little conversation about what he is see, uh, seeing and feeling and hearing out there in the housing market uh, here in Atlanta and in Georgia, and just kind of share some of his insights. So I'm going to throw it to John. And if you would, sir, uh, just tell us a little bit about uh, Market Insight and, and what you guys do. Great. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be here. We track housing, new and resale uh, in 26 cities in the Southeast. Uh, we've been in the industry 30 years and getting old. Um, thought we'd seen it all with the last recession, and then uh, then we figured out no uh, pandemic. Who would have thought it? So uh, we're we're very um, uh, passionate about helping builders and developers and bankers make good decisions on deals uh, that make sense and, and are profitable. And um, and then we're also tracking uh, the current uh, pandemic and the effects on housing as well. So okay, well listen. Um... We'll get right into it. You know, uh, our industry has been doing very well this year and things were looking very up. Uh, the housing market has been hot and uh, that's sort of the bread and butter of our ready mix concrete industry. So just getting right to it. Tell us how you've seen the housing market sort of play out during this COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah, it's um, interesting because um, we were at record levels of activity. In the, in the country as a whole and, and in Atlanta and in Georgia uh, before this hit. So, for example, just the sheer number of new contracts being signed for a new home, new construction home in January and February were the highest raw numbers um, since 2007, January, February 2007. So we, we, were, we were at a 13-year high um, when, we, when we slammed into this uh, pandemic wall. Uh, March first half uh, carried over uh, pretty decently. Second half of March kind of played off a little bit, a little bit uh, worse in terms of uh, numbers. What's been amazing though has been the fact that the vast majority of those contracts that were signed in January, February, which typically end up closing 30, 60, 90 days later, um, are, are solid, and there's been very little fallout on those contracts. Not as much as you would think given the situation that we're in. Um, so we're still seeing a lot of activity on the build side because we're closing all those homes, you know, that we sold in January, February. Um, but the, you know, we're going to probably see that begin to slow as we watch the effects of um, the pandemic um, into April. But, but April, we seem to, for now, have found a bottom uh, in the first week of April, and we've seen steady improvement the second, third week, uh, and we're tracking everything weekly now. So, you know, we think that maybe we found the bottom and it corresponded with the peak of coronavirus cases in Georgia. Um, and that peaked in the third week of March and has been down ever since. So we think that is going to be a slow, gradual, continuing improvement as we move forward. Great. Um, so when you're talking about what you're tracking. Uh, explain this a little bit more about uh, the leading indicators that you're looking for. Yeah, Do you, and you wanna watch those leading indicators um, because it tells you where you're gonna go in the next quarter. So uh, the best leading indicator is the contract data. Pending sales is another term for that. So when somebody signs a contract, it goes into the system and and that gives us a heads up on 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 the direction if, if pending sales are going up closings are a lagging indicator they're going to happen 30 60 90 days later so you watch those pendings um pendings were looking great in february um the pending sales were down in march about nine percent so far in april uh, that pen, and then closings are going to follow. So we're going to see the pendings go down, closings have to go down. When pendings go back up, closings will go back up as well. But just to give you an idea, uh, the first week in April, um, 
was down 60% over the same week in March. Um, and the second week was down 45%. And the third week was only down 13%. So we've seen a progressive improvement in those negative numbers in that under contract uh, uh, metric that we track. So that's good. Wow, that sounds great. Um, so just your gut feeling, what should we expect going into the second half of the year? Yeah, it's, there's a lot, there, there are a lot of unknowns. Um, however, we felt very strongly that the effect of the pandemic would, would closely resemble what happened to us in 18 when 2018, when interest rates spiked up, it really, it really took a huge hit on housing. And then when the, when the interest rates peaked in November of 18 and started coming down, demand rushed back into the system. So uh, we should see a steady improvement as we come on the other side of this pandemic. Um, there are questions as to what if it flares back up again in December and January and February. I think we're going to be much more prepared. It's not going to be a shock to the system like it was the first time. Um, I really think that housing was in such great shape as we entered this in terms of uh, very low inventory, not only on the new home side, but resale as well. Now there's no resale inventory because everybody's taking their home off the market. Um, uh, strong job growth will come back. Um, we had a lot of in-migration, a lot of household formation, uh, very low interest rates. They're going to be zero for a very long time. So all those fundamentals will be in play as we come out the underside. Uh, you know, other economists, I'm not an economist, don't even play one on TV. But the guys that I respect, like uh, Rob Dietz at the National Association of Home Builders, uh, really believes that because housing was in such good shape when this happened, that third and fourth quarter, uh, we will be, you know, taking our, our traditional place uh, in leading the country out of the recession that was, that was caused by a pandemic, you know, that came out of nowhere. So I, I agree with him. I think, th I think that's going to happen. Hope it happens. Great. Well, listen, um, these are questions that have been on the minds of our members. and We appreciate uh, your time this morning. Uh, for GRMCA members who may want to follow a little bit more closely what you guys do at Market Insight, um, tell us how we how we can do that. Yeah, we're 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 updating. We normally update monthly anyway, so most people do quarterly updates. We've always done monthly updates. Um, now we've gone to for the foreseeable future to a weekly update. We think it's critical to make sure you know keep our pulse and keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening. They can always visit our website marketinsight.com market the letter n sght.com we're going to be posting our weekly newsletters on that website you'll see a link to do it and we're going to update those uh on the website every tuesday again for the foreseeable future we will be doing a major event that we've been doing twice a year since 06 uh so 14 years uh, with dr rajiv dewan who's the georgia state university um economist the, uh, the director for the Economic Forecasting Center. Probably that's going to be um, remote for the first time ever. We usually have about four or 500 people in attendance. So um, the good thing is that will allow a lot more people to attend. Rajiv is going to be excellent as always. That's June 10th. Um, you know, so if anybody would like to, um, would like to attend or have an invitation to that probably uh, online event, uh, just click the info button on our website and let us know. Listen, John, uh, appreciate you checking in with us and uh, stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon, hopefully. Thanks. You too. Thank you very much.